Weird boomerang earthquake causing a sonic boom has been detected underneath the Atlantic Ocean. A unique tremor appeared to have turned around at some point near the fault and gone back with phenomenally increased velocity. And scientists found evidence of a one-of-a-kind boomerang earthquake, this is what they call it, a back-propagating super shear rupture. And it's so super shear that that means that it causes a sonic boom. And it's also very devastating. They're usually over seven magnitude. And that shook vast swaths of underwater terrain in the Atlantic Ocean near the equator back in 2016. The results of respective research were published in the journal Nature Geoscience. The Romanche fracture zone stretches for about 900 kilometers hiding between the South America and African tectonic plates. It's the mid-Atlantic ridge right there. And it produced a powerful 7.1 magnitude earthquake. That ridge, the mid-Atlantic ridge going from the North Pole to the South Pole, of course, to Antarctica, is full of magma underneath. So uh, this earthquake was a powerful 7.1 magnitude, but it was the telltale nature of shaking that made the event unprecedented. It turned out to be an odd tremor that went one way before turning around and returning for more at much accelerated super shear speeds of up to six kilometers per second. That's uh, over three miles per second. The study revealed that the rupture propagated upward and eastward in the direction of a weak spot where the fracture zone meets the mid-Atlantic ridge before suddenly turning westward with the tremor heading back much quicker to the center of the fault. While scientists have found that such a reversing rupture mechanism is possible from theoretical models, our new study provides some of the clearest evidence for this enigmatic mechanism occurring in a real fault. This is what the lead researcher, seismologist Stephen Hicks from Imperial College London explains. He acknowledged that, in contrast to the fault structure proper, the way the earthquake traveled was not that simple. Researchers came to believe that the initial deep phase of the tremor released significant fracture energy to initiate the rupture reversal in shallower terrain in the second phase. They said that either both fracture patches were sufficiently pre-seismically stressed to promote seismogenic failure or the deeper SC1 rupture instantaneously increased the static stress, immediately causing the shallow SE2 portion of the fault to fall. This is what the authors explain, dwelling on the unique backward propagating earthquake. They were luckily to have witnessed to detect something like this in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of the ocean, is an event that is truly out of the ordinary. Now, studies like this help us understand how past earthquakes ruptured, how future earthquakes may rupture, and how that relates to the potential impact for faults near populated areas is what Casey Adderhold, seismologist with Incorporated Research Institutes for Seismology, said via email. A kick in the ground, and the latest boomerang was recorded at, in the, in the mid-ocean ridge in the Atlantic, as we said. Now, further computer modeling suggests that the quake may have started deep underground, rushing east until it uh, neared the mid-ocean ridge, turning back, racing through the upper section of the fault. The second leg of the trembler moved remarkably quickly, quickly so-called super shear speeds, that is, supersonic speeds. The quake unzipped the surface at an estimated 11,000 miles per hour, fast enough to dart from New York to London in 18 and a half minutes. This is so quick that the seismic wave piled up much like the Mach 1 cone, the Mach cone that forms from pressure waves as an airplane flies at supersonic speeds. So this is a Mach 11 type speed, obviously. Mach 10, Mach 11 speed. The concentration cone of waves from a super shear quake can further amplify a trembler's destructive power. Now, understanding when and why these boomerangs events, boomerang earthquakes happen, is vital to grappling with the array of risks earthquakes present. Shaking from a quake can focus near one the end of the fault, near the one end of the fault, in the direction the trembler is traveling, which is similar to the muted muting of high-pitched tones of a horn as a ray, train rushes by, like a Doppler effect. Seismologist Ling Sing Meng of University of California in Los Angeles, who's not part of the study team, said, while this focus shaking is usually thought to happen in one direction, 
a boomerang could focus shaking in two opposite directions, and if it were super sheer, the rattling could be even worse. But at least one big question remains, how often does this happen? The boomerang earthquake at super sheer speeds, as the team observed in the Atlantic, may be a fair or rare breed. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first time it's happened, says geophysicist Yoshihiro Kaneka of GNS Science New Zealand, who was not part of the study. Wider evidence of boomerang quakes is mounting. These backtracking events have been studied in computer models as well as simulated in lab experiments. The theory says that it's there, but it's quite different to see that in the real world. Now, uh, there have also been hints of these events for other quakes. Some scientists argue that the magnitude 9 Tohoku earthquake that struck Japan in 2011, the most powerful in the country's recorded history, may have had some amount of boomeranging rupture. The 2016 earthquake in the Atlantic, rattling Kumamoto, also seemed to have, uh, no, the 2016 quake in Japan, rattling Kumamoto, also seems to have ruptured in a similar process. For that event, the initial shake triggered two other earthquakes in a cascade of events, one of which raced backward to partially overlap the initial uh, break. Kaneko said this might actually be more common than we think. So these boomerangs may be obscured by common methods used to analyze quakes, which are based on an assumption that an earthquake rushes in one direction. Naturally, they're not look we're not looking for it, but we don't expect it to exist. Yet for earthquakes, it seems complexities might be normal rather than the exception. And as Hicks says, the more and more we look at earthquakes in more detail, the of course we see stranger things. There's always new things happening, being discovered in geology. So you see, this is uh, from uh, uh, Sputnik News and National Geographic, and I'll leave your links for this. And uh, please tell me what you think. Thank you. So it seems like uh, these boomerang quakes, or even the big quakes, obviously have some type of a pressure push towards other faults in other areas of nearby faults, or even across the world. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.